This came out uh, a little while ago. It came out uh, this past January. I'm looking forward to this year, John. Nothing but dog shit so far. <laughs> Except for one. For this review, Dog um, shit. <laughs> don't even need to get into it to say that. I mean, that's the way they, that's the way he feels about it. What we're talking about here today um, is Born of Osiris's fifth album, The Simulation. Our friend Ken is going to review this with us real quick. Yeah, Ken, you want to share your thoughts? Sure. So um, I listened to this. Now, keep in mind, I first listened to Born of Osiris when you know <coughs> um, New Rain. The Rain came out, and I was uh, was taken aback by. It. I was like, this is awesome. It's cool. There are they really good rhythms and really. Uh, really eerie at times. I really enjoyed it. And then I listened to this, and it is not that album. This album is a big old steaming pile of dog shit. So for that reason, it doesn't even deserve my review, so I'm gonna walk off. Alright, but I guess he wants no part of that, so it's fine. We'll continue it. Born of Osiris has said that this is, you know, one of the albums that they want to do. They kind of want to do, like, the two-album deal. They are doing a second album later yeah, this year. Yeah, so we're going to be getting, you know, the second part of this um, later in the year. But right now, let's talk about the simulation. Okay, so going forward, the last few albums have been okay. There have been, you know, like Ken said, the new Rain is pretty solid. Everything up to the Discovery had their guitarist Jason Richardson write most of the music, from my understanding. Mm. And even up to the Discovery, where they started introducing a lot more synthesizers, um, not synths, but electronic elements in it, I still thought it was pretty solid. The last couple albums, you know, they had great songs, I thought. There were songs on the album that were eh, and there were songs I really dug. And then this came out. The Accursed was uh, one of the singles that came out. And you know, right off the bat, I mean, this is kind of like an introduction to me for this band. I mean, I knew, I always knew who they were, but this is really like my first like sit down with them. The production sounds a little like muffled. Like, I don't know if that's just like a Sumerian records thing because I don't listen to like a ton of bands off of that label. That's how that guitar kind of has sounded more recent albums. The thing with Born of Osiris is they become very predictable. They become very generic. The Accursed, when this single came out, I didn't hear it right off the bat. I wait till the album came out. You know, I was told by other people, and I try not to listen to other people, like, this sounds very generic. Mm -hmm. And I listened to it, and I thought this just sounded like a very generic Born of Osiris track. It's, this one's, like, kind of on the repetitive side. They're known for that more progressive, like, side of them, and this doesn't really have much of that this in this single. This is more of a aggressive side of Born of Osiris. Uh, disconnect to me if I'm saying that right. I'm pretty. I'm pretty sure that's not even a word in the dictionary. I'm pretty. I, I think it's just disconnect to. No, disconnect. Oh, that's not a word. That is literally not a word. Disconnectance. No, disconnect to me. Sure, that's, that's not a word. <laughs> this is an album, so let's continue. <laughs> this song kind of gives you more of that progressive feel to it. The album went from generic to me to. Like generic Born of Osiris and uh, like generic metal core. Mm. It just sounds very generic with electronic elements in it. Uh, Cycles of Tragedy, um, I had watched the music video for that. And I don't know about you, but I was laughing at the facial expressions they were making in that video. Was that the one with the... Uh... That's the one you showed me. Oh, yeah, that one. Yeah, yeah. that one. I was... <laughs> it's all a blur. It's, it's become <laughs> such a blur with this. I'm not usually one to fight listening through a record. Papa Roach wasn't hard to listen to. Mm. Bring Me the Horizon, I didn't really have problems to listen to. As much as I don't really care, they had good, they had okay songs. Mm -hmm. This was tough. I actually, I think this is the track I stopped the first time. For this one, it kind of feels like it's like the same lyrics are repeating over and over again. It kind of feels like like the chorus is like the only thing that's there. You, you don't really hear anything else or you don't really pay much attention to anything else because it's so focused on that. And that, that's what, where the mindset of like it being kind of repetitive comes in and being like generic, yep. as you were saying. Under the Gun, I actually really like this one. Hmm. This is actually one of, I think, the best song on the album. Um, it utilizes a lot of those like keyboards and like synthesizers a lot better than um, the other songs on the album. And I think that maybe if they had done some more stuff like this on the other songs, um, maybe that mindset of it, of it being like very repetitive and everything wouldn't be there. I need, I need some hope in this. <laughs> Recursion was just an in-between track. I had kind of been wondering, you know, with an album like this short, you know, 25 minutes, which is like not even like that long for an album. You would think that the length would be a positive thing about it. You know, 25 minutes, that's pretty That's pretty short. Listening to it, you say it feels longer than that. It, no, it does. That was yeah. that was my big thing. The one thing I think Bourne can do sometimes is everything flows really well. Mm -hmm. And as much as I think this album is very repetitive, this flows right into the next track. It's almost unnoticeable, but it flows right in. Analog's in a cell, you don't. One thing that really stood out for me is you don't hear a lot of the clean vocals that you hear on the other songs. Yeah, the keyboard. They have two singers, just so you know. They have yeah. the lead singer, and then they have the keyboard player who does the 
weird clean, so kind of clean screaming. Yep. Silence and the Echo was, I think, the first single for this album, and it's the longest song on the album, too. Everything, all the other songs are more on, like, the three minute, three minute, three minutes and a half side. I can kind of see why this was, like, single worthy. It kind of differentiates itself a little bit from everything else. Because of that, it does give you, like, a false representation of the album. Hearing this single for the first time, you know, when it came out, you kind of got that hope that maybe it wasn't so generic, but then, you know, listen to the album, you realize, wow, that doesn't sound like that first single. Pushing it to the end of the album with one without the other, you, you, I kind of start to not have many thoughts on it, really. I've summarized almost every song at this point. Like, it just, it just, it, it went from generic Born of Osiris to just very generic really quickly. I just didn't think there was much to this album that offered. I will recheck out that song you mentioned. That's yeah. that, that you said is your favorite. I don't know, it all, it just flowed. It just sounded like one song, and it dragged the album mm. dragged it doesn't seem like they can do the whole like two album like thing i know i know they share you know a label with, with like somebody like between the buried and me and they can do it they can very easily do it but born of osiris i don't see as a band that can that can do it you do realize we do have to do the second one this year yes we do which will be coming hopefully the sixth album um is a little bit better than this well, i always give as much as i can crap on bands and as much as you know we try to be analytical we're hoping that this next one is going to be Better. I think it brings us to the biggest question of the night, age-old question. Does, Does it dad, dad core? core? By definition, dad core is... Could have gone pro in college. You know, hurt myself, hurt my hamstrings. Yep. But by damn it, I work in the office 9 to 5 now. No. Let me tell you something. Oh, all right. <laughs> I wouldn't say it does, but I mean, let me let me enlighten you. Feels otherwise. We're at the end of a decade, 20 years into the 21st century. We made this as a joke of bands that sound like they're just age and stuff that dads listen to. 10 years, the band continues doing what they're doing. This is what dadcore is going to become. This is going to be the <laughs> definition of dadcore. This is the kind of stuff that I could be hanging. At. We could be hanging out with friends, having a you know family parties, whatever. And that one guy is going to be like, hey, I got some Five Finger Death Punch. I got some Board of Osiris. Let's throw it out. Let's no. get you know, let's get the jitterbug going and everything. Yeah. You playing festivals or shows with Five Finger Death Punch soon, you think, at this rate? Not necessarily, but this is this is what Spons I see. Sponsored by Monster Energy? Right now it's Brocore. That's what I'd say. This okay. is Brocore. And it definitely, in 10 years' time, we could be seeing this as the definition of deadcore. Please like, share, subscribe us on YouTube, uh, Facebook. We would like to hear your thoughts on this. Like we said before, we're looking for albums. We're looking for stuff to listen to, something different. Yeah, we also reviewed uh, Ginger's new EP. Uh, be sure to check that as well. That just came out. And we'll see you next time.